and start with the body. Because the body is so centralized in our sense of illusion that if you apply it to the body, you really apply it to almost everything else right away. So if you cut through the illusion that you are the body, doesn't mean you stop taking care of it, but you cut through the illusion that it is what you are. I was wondering if we talk about illusion and existence um, as existence uh, comes is like an appearing like the pixels on the screen like the illusion um, but the existence is it also an illusion it really depends on what you mean when you say existence um, I mean the existence of form and shape yes because it is appearing. But it, it's um, okay. I'm not saying it's not showing up in the uh -huh. way that it's showing up. I'm not saying an apple is not an apple. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying a tree is not a tree. I'm not saying anger isn't anger. I'm just saying it's an illusion. It's still a tree. It's mm -hmm. still anger. So is the meaning what we give to it? That's the that's that's I where just, the... I just recommend that you stop giving it reality. That's all. Go through your life not attributing reality to anything that appears. You'll be free. Mm -hmm. You'll experience the freedom you already are. So you interact with anger and you do what you know best to do with anger and you grow in wisdom on how to deal with that over time. That's different. That's spirituality. Mm -hmm. Self-realization has nothing to do with spiritual growth in some ways. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Does it make sense? Yes. Yes. So yes. I'm not saying it's not relevant. I'm not saying it doesn't contain any information. I'm just saying it's unreal. So everything that comes appears uh, in an existing form or shape. Yep. I should not give or it any Or in a formless state. Because even... Even yeah. formlessness can be experienced, yes. like a state of emptiness or a state of formlessness. But now we're getting subtler. Like advanced meditators typically like don't apply this sort of discernment to the degree where it could really free them. And they, for 20, 30, 40 years, they keep meditating on the formless states or yanas as they call it, and, mm -hmm. um, or like samadhis and so forth. Ultimately, it's great to be able to cultivate samadhis or like states of absorption or states of like, that's cool, but that's spirituality. Self-realization is what am I? It's very simple. Mm -hmm. I am not my changing states. So I could be super absorbed in God consciousness. That's not I. I could be super deluded about my business or company or relationship, but that's not I either. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the more you mature in this self-realization, the less distinction you will attribute between being angry at your partner versus being in a formless state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Now, is one still preferable? You could say in some senses, but less and less does it become actually a big deal at all. Because you start seeing that nothing is you, and that everything is an illusory expression of the Creator, or God, or Source, or Reality. Can I add something? For, for, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard you said in the, during the meditation um, mastery about like arrogance, about interfering, uh, like uh, being, well, let me say it in my words, um, how I perceived it. Um, oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Uh, That's an interesting statement. Yeah. I am sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating, yeah. I... No, I am sweating. That I'm sweating. Yeah, but what is which I is you? What is sweating? Is mm -hmm. the I sweating? No, the the but the my existing form and shape is ex, um, experiencing some um, sensations, which uh -huh. makes me which makes the body sweat. Yes, make, does it make you sweat? Uh, I find it somehow exciting. <laughs> so it's not really. Um, I. Is I excited? 
Um, or are you aware of the excitement? Yeah, I'm aware of the excitement. So you're not excited? Uh, I always have to, to, to go back when you yeah, say you something. Yeah, you have to go back. That's self-realization for you, going back. <laughs> Can you repeat it one more time? What? What you just last said, your last sentence? That's self-realization for you. It's going back. Yeah. It's going back. Retracing your steps of delusion. How mm -hmm. did you come to attribute reality to what you give reality to? And through investigation, through discernment, through clarity, through questioning, through inquiry, you can very easily realize that you're not this, and you're not this, and you're not this. And then naturally, that which never appears becomes known to itself in a way that's different than I am aware of this experience. It's like an intrinsic self-luminous knowing. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I want to, s to say something, but I think it's not really relevant anymore. Um, right. So right now, can you see that you have no questions? You might yeah, be you might yeah. be aware uh -huh. of having questions, mm -hmm. and you are not asking the question. You're aware of something asking the question. Mm -hmm. You're aware of something sweating. Mm -hmm. You're aware of something called excitement. Mm -hmm. But it's not you. Mm -hmm. Does excitement affect you? You can it, say yes. It can be. Okay, so the excitement can affect you. Yeah, it depends on where oh. I perceive myself from as reality or illusion. Or... Okay, so what if you perceive yourself as the illusion? What if you're in a moment of delusion, so you're identified with the one who is excited mm -hmm. or who is depressed or whatever, mm -hmm. or who is sweating, in that moment that you feel like you are the one sweating and excited. Who is that? Sorry, who are you? Then. So you feel like it's you. When I perceive it from my illusionary state, mm -hmm. when I attach yeah. to my form, mm -hmm. I will add much a lot of meaning to it and try to True. analyze it and True. what I should do differently. But when you do that, are you affected by even that? Are you affected even by your self-identification with form? Are mm, you? No, I, it always just works its way through. But um, even while it's changing and working its way through and hurting and exciting, are you, even when you believe in it, mm -hmm. is the I affected? No. Great. So bring the sort of discernment to that too. Leave no exceptions. It's even, otherwise you still perceive yourself to be bound. Yeah. You are still giving the meaning that if I feel bound, I am bound. I'm only unbound when I feel unbound. Mm -hmm. That is a very subtle identification that even that one you can cut through. Mm -hmm. I see that. So yeah. that even when you are feeling distracted, even when you are feeling identified with your emotions, that too, check if it's affecting the I. Even the feeling that the I is affected, is it affecting the I? Is the background suddenly no longer stable? Mm -hmm. You see? Yes. <laughs> and then that way you can constantly, at subtler and subtler levels, discern between reality and illusion. And then you see even the eye that feels that sweating and it's on a spiritual journey and it's not quite there yet, but it's doing quite well, is not you. It's not real. Mm -hmm. Then it's still there. You're still growing, but it's not what you are. Does it make sense? Yes. And this is very high level thinking slash realizing, it's very subtle. And there's only a few scriptures that talk like this. Because uh, even in the scriptures and the Eastern teachings, and also my teachings, there is that level of teaching where it seems to be the highest, but it's not quite the most direct yet, which is free yourself from your illusions. But there's a level beyond that, which is beyond ignorance and enlightenment. It's beyond samsara and nirvana. 
It's beyond illusion and reality. It's beyond this or that. It's beyond getting it or not getting it. It's beyond realizing it or not realizing it. See if you can, through faith, open up to that. Let that cut the ties for you, if you will. Thank you. Sweet. Mm -hmm. And start with the body, because the body is so centralized in our sense of illusion that if you apply it to the body, you really apply it to almost everything else right away. So if you cut through the illusion that you are the body, doesn't mean you stop taking care of it, but you cut through the illusion that it is what you are, then very quickly the self-realization, in a sense, occurs or deepens. And then your courage increases, your strength increases, your mission readiness increases, because, and your ability to allow your life force to flow as it's intended to flow, like according to your blueprint, according to your intention for taking birth. And you stop inhibiting it with the resistor of the body belief, the belief, I am the body which is where most of your fear comes from, no? that you are the body. It's what inhibits most of your flow and gives you the greatest degree of confusion and delusion. So see what part of your body is I. See if you can find that even a single part of the body, a single sensation, a single idea about the body that affects the I, that changes the I the innermost sense of background I. If you keep seeing that, keep seeing that, you're going to, quote unquote, feel or know freer, know yourself freer, as freer. And then that's really where courage comes from, or fearlessness. It's not so much a quality to cultivate to an extent, but to really quantum leap in your courage, you have to see through the identification with what you're not. that will skyrocket your flow, your availability to do what you're here to do or let happen what's here to happen through you. And every time you have a fear concern, notice that, uh-oh, I was assuming on some level that I equals the body. <laughs>